like a quilt, won't just happen by accident. We learn to be peaceful. We can't just throw a few things together and call it peace education. There needs to be a design and a purpose. Every element, each story adds to the quilt. I'm an elementary teacher and I teach peace. Here are some stories from my journey to peace education with grade three students with some pictures of our student made quilt to guide us. Let's start with some of my personal reasons for getting into peace education. Sean, my cousin's boyfriend. It was the May long weekend and in the town of Cloverdale, that means rodeo weekend. Sean and his buddy head to the bar, walk in and grab a couple of seats. His buddy orders them each a beer and Sean heads to the washroom. He walks in, but never walks out. He had accidentally walked into a targeted gang hit. He is shot once, the other person three times. Police and ambulance arrive. The other person is rushed to hospital and survives. Sean does not. He leaves behind a family and friends and never gets to meet his daughter born seven months later. What can you do after such unspeakable tragedy? Peace cannot be achieved through violence. It can only be attained through understanding. Then there's this story. My brother's best friend, Chris, was a kind and friendly guy who loved music, especially the guitar. He was working on recording some new songs. He had two children who adored him. He was kind and friendly and had made some poor choices. Still, he does not deserve to be shot and killed by a violent roommate. One shot. We had just seen him two weeks before, hanging out in his garage. My brother was devastated and misses him to this day. These people are strangers to you. Why should their stories matter? What impact would they have on you? To me, it comes down to the South African concept of Ubuntu, which means my humanity is caught up, is inextricably bound up in yours. What happens to me affects you, affects all of us. Sean, Chris, and their shooters all have one thing in common. They were all students at one point. Our schools have so much potential to be part of the solution. Peace education is about establishing caring and connection. I've seen the positives it can bring. My class has worked with caring in order to build connection within our classroom and within our school to bring about transformative learning experiences. A few years ago, I decided to add a peace block to my schedule. A lot of what I do happens on a daily basis and is woven into other content areas picture books and read alouds that touch on topics around peace or other social justice issues. Trying to provide, as Rudine Sims Bishop says, books that are both mirrors and windows. Ones that reflect my students' lives and ones that provide windows into a variety of ways of being. We'll read books around themes about um, sexual orientation and gender identity, indigenous content, and other areas of interest. Still, I like having a dedicated time for explicit instruction and reflection. We'll read a book such as What Does Peace Feel Like? And they'll reflect after every page in their peace journals. Peace smells like fresh cut grass. Peace sounds like my baby cousin. Peace tastes like strawberries. Peace feels like a really big hug. Peace sounds like kind words. And it's an open time for reflection as no marks are assigned and no one is required to share if they don't want to. Then on Valentine's Day, my class walks in to find a post-it note on each of their desks. They have each received a compliment personally written by me about something that I've noticed that makes them special. For example, one might say, Shayna is creative because she makes her own comics. After the initial excitement and confusion, I pass out our peace journals and ask them to reflect. How did you feel when you read that compliment? I want them to capture that feeling 
in order to help build peace. Some of the reflections were, when I read the post-it, I felt good because it was really nice. When I read the post-it, I thought, I'm a good person. Now we're ready for the next step, writing compliments for each of their classmates. Madame, what if I don't know what to write? We brainstorm a huge list of ideas for if they're stuck and we get started. There's excitement and confusion as the air as they figure out where and how to write the compliments. On the first day, each group only gets through a few students, but they can't wait to read what others have written about them. I manage to make them wait until I've had a chance to proofread all the compliments. None of them are intentionally insulting. However, a few need some reworking. For example, Ryan writes that Amandeep is good at playing with girly toys. I talk with him about how to make his compliment more inclusive, and while well, I'm not sure he fully understands why, he does agree to modify it. Others have written fairly generic comments, uh, compliments such as, Sam is good at sports, Priya is funny, but still, they have written compliments for every student in the class. When I asked them to reflect about how they felt while they were doing this activity, most said they felt really good, although interestingly, a few said they felt nervous. And one student wrote, it was hard to at first when she went to write a compliment for somebody who had been mean to her in the past. I was impressed by the depth of their reflections and by their ability to overcome previous problems with other students in order to write the compliment. Even with students like Sam, who I was worried would have a hard time writing about others, while well, I was also worried others might have a hard time writing about him. There was no hesitation in their efforts. As our final celebration of compliments, I randomly hand out the sheets, and each student makes a poster for another student in the class, featuring one of the compliments. Later, two parents personally thank me for this activity. And I don't say that to brag, but more to point out, I haven't been thanked for many of my math lessons. <laughs> These are the things that matter. A definition of peace education is caring for life, caring for self, caring for others, and for a natural habitat. Through the compliments activity, we worked on caring for others. What about caring for self? Recently, I've been fortunate to do a project called Identity Day with my class during our school district's Diversity and Respect Week. For Identity Day, each student makes a project about something that's important to them. There's no criteria other than they need to be able to explain, why did you choose it? Why is it special to you? When we present our projects, they can use any format for a celebration day, we want to see them sharing about them. That day, they're so excited and have so much pride in what they have to share. Some topics were their pet, family background, religion, or favorite sports team. Through creating the Identity Day project, students had a chance to practice caring for self, but we also got to practice caring for others as we walked around to a variety of classes that we don't normally interact with and got to see their projects as well. Amazing connections were made. Some of the things I overheard were, you've been to India? I'm from India. Madame Collado, you have to listen to her play piano. She's amazing. And one of my favorites, you like Minecraft? I'm wearing Minecraft earrings. Identity Day was a big event and classes in grades one to seven participated. Here's a story from when we did our first buddy activity with kindergarten students. As we sat at the carpet, concerns were raised. What if the, my buddy just runs around the class and won't listen? What if my buddy loses each time and starts crying? Suggestions were offered. Don't be too harsh. Remember, they're just little. If your buddy finds the game too easy, give them extra counters so they have to put in double each time. After much discussion and sharing, we are ready. Our first buddy experience together was truly magical. 
James, who is normally insecure, confidently shows his buddy around the class and even gives him extra counters so that he'll win. Kayla's buddy cheers for everything they do, exactly what she needs to boost her confidence. So, now that we've done some work to establish peace, caring, and connection, what is the next step? Sitting with my class, I asked them, what could we do to show caring to another group of people at our school, outside of our classroom? Immediately, hands shoot up. We could buy flowers for the secretary. We could make a new friend at recess. We could clean up the schoolyard. We could bake cookies for all the teachers. We could teach someone a new game. We could make thank you cards for all the staff. To me, these are all powerful ideas, and I tell them this, and then I ask, which one do you want to do? Few want to do each one, but they agree. They all want to make thank you cards for all of the teachers. Our child-initiated act of peace has begun. I grab supplies, we brainstorm a list of ideas of what to write, and off they go. Students are highly motivated, as I see in Ryan, who is often not very engaged in what we're doing, but spends over an hour making a detailed pop-up card for the child and youth worker. In the end, we have made 56 cards, one for each staff member. Our child-initiated act of peace is complete. But then I wonder, now what? We have envelopes that we have decorated and labeled, hopefully correctly. 56 cards is a lot to keep track of. How will we hand them out? So I asked my class, what should we do? Immediately, Jared's hand goes up. Madame, we should do ding dong ditch. <laughs> what do you mean, I ask? You know, Nikki Nikki nine doors, Michaela adds, trying to be helpful. They explain, a student or a pair of students will knock on a door, leave the card, and run. Then the teacher will open the door and see the card. We talk about how to do this inconspicuously, hopefully, and then I'm handing out envelopes, suddenly left alone in my classroom with combined feelings of hope, excitement, and nervousness. What were teachers' reactions to these cards, you might be wondering? A thanked uh, students individually or our class as a whole. Some sent notes or told me in the staff room how much it meant to them. Many were really touched that students who they didn't know that well or, or at all could write such thoughtful cards for them. In the end, what stayed with me and my students was the fact that this small gesture could have a, such a big impact on a variety of people that we don't normally interact with. What else is a part of peace education? In my school district, we now have Diversity and Respect Week, which is a great time to focus on topics around peace. There's ongoing work happening towards reconciliation and creating inclusive schools, among other areas. I've created a diversity club at my school for students in grades five to seven that they've named Circle of Hope, where we can learn about issues and take action. Another part of peace education that I haven't touched on is peace with the natural habitat. To me, this is a key part of peace education, and I know I feel calmer and more peaceful when I'm able to spend more time outside. I'd like to do this with my students, take them outside more often in order to build more connections with nature and better understand the importance of the environment around us, as I believe there's so much richness to be gained from this. Ask me whether what I have done is my life. So, why is peace education so important to me? To me, by living and teaching peace education, I'm being true to myself and I'm doing what really matters to me. I'm trying to make a difference in my life and in the lives of my students. Peace education is big. It's wondering why we have people killing other whole groups of people, why bullying persists. It's big projects aimed at reconciliation. Peace education is also small. It's leaving compliments for every student, letting them know that you recognize what makes them special. 
It's making one connection with one person. It's a class deciding to make thank you cards for all the staff. It's going home today and doing one thing to establish peace, caring, and connection with your family or friends or at school or work. As I finish, I want you to ask yourself this question. How are you building peace, caring, and connection in your everyday? Thank you. Thank you.